Good evening. I'd like to call to order the Butte Super Bowl Council of Commissioners Committee of the Whole Meeting for Wednesday, April 10th, 2024. Clerk. One presiding, 10 present, one absent. Please let the record show that Commissioner Shea is, Commissioner Shea is uh, excused. Commissioner Sorich, would you lead us in the prayer and the pledge? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Fellow Commissioners, Almighty God, we implore you, look upon us and guide us this night as we make decisions which will greatly affect our community of Butte Silver Bowl. Direct our thoughts, words, and deeds so that we please you and best serve our fellow citizens. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner Sorch. I would now ask for public comment on any items on the agenda. Okay, seeing none. We'll move into section one, bid openings, public hearings, and or presentations. Bid openings, communication number 2024-132, Mark Neary, Public Works Director, requesting Council of Commissioners concurrence to schedule a bid opening for April 10th, 2024, for concrete work at the Civic Center, Orford Street, Wells, and Mullen Streets, and Cherokee Park. County Attorney Fivey, do we have proof of publication? Uh, Chairman Fredrickson, for uh, communicate for one, two, and three, there is proof of publication, and that appears to be in order. Okay, thank you. Director Neary. Uh, thank you, Chairman Fredrickson. We have one bid for the concrete. It's from White Resources out of Butte. Fredrickson, mm -hmm. um, it appears that a bid bond from a licensed surety company was posted and that appears to be in order. Okay. Uh, Chairman Fredrickson, commissioners, the total price on this package is $430,183.50. 430 18350 430-18350. Okay. Um, did we receive a, a engineer's estimate on this? Chairman Fredrickson, 450000 Okay. All right. Commissioner Thatcher. At this time, I'd like to make a motion to... Refer communication number 2024-132 back to the Public Works Department for a recommendation. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there anything on the question? Would commissioners please vote? Yeah. Oh, we do have a question. Commissioner Callahan. Thanks, Mr. Fredrickson. Uh, Mark, I was just curious, why did we bundle all these together and they're not individuals? Director Neary. Uh, Chairman Fredrickson, Commissioner Callahan. So we could get a bid. We've gone out to bid four times for these packages and we haven't received any bids. So we put them all together, but they're paid separately. Okay. So. Thank you. All right. Is there any other questions? All right. Commissioners, will you please vote? Clerk, will you record the vote? 11 yay, zero nay. 11 yay, zero nay. Motion passes. To communication, to communication number 2024-143, John Sullivan, Government Buildings Manager, requesting Council of Commissioners concurrence to schedule a bid opening for April 10th, 2024 for LED lighting upgrade for the detention center. We did not receive any bids, so this will um, 
be posted again or okay make a motion sir All right, three, communication number 2024-165, Angie Mulliken, Public Works Budget and Grant Manager, requesting Council of Commissioners concurrence to schedule a bid opening for April 10th, 2024 for the Molten Dam Spillway and Embankment Improvement Project for the Water Division. Director Neary. Thank you, Chairman Fredrickson. Looks like we have three bids for this uh, Molten Spillway Project. The first one is from Montana Civil Contractors, Belgrade, Montana. Commissioner Fredrickson, um, there does appear to be a bid bond in the amount of 10% uh, from a licensed surety company, and it does appear to be in order. Okay, thank you, County Attorney. Chairman Fredrickson, Commissioners, the total price on this bid package is $2,846,047.25. $2,846,047.25. Okay. $2,846,047.25. Okay. The second bid is from Bjorn Johnson Construction out of Missoula. Commissioner Fredrickson, mm -hmm. there does appear to be a bid bond posted uh, in the amount of 10% from a licensed surety company, and that does appear to be in order. Okay, thank you. Chairman Fredrickson, the total on this bid package is $1,493,898 even. $1,493,898 even. Yes. Okay. Uh, the final bid is from William Civil Construction from Belgrade. Chairman Fredrickson, um, there does appear to be a bond posted in the amount of 10% uh, from a licensed surety company that appears to be in order. Okay, thank you. Chairman Fredrickson, the total is $2,009,343.00. $2,009,343.00. Commissioner Thatcher. Thank you, Chairman Fredrickson. It's time I'd like to make a motion to refer communication number 2024-165 back to the Public Works Department for a recommendation. We have a motion and a second. 
Is there anything on the question? Commissioner Anderson. Chairman yep, Fredrickson, Director Commissioner Green. Anderson, three million. <coughs> okay. Are there any other questions? Will commissioners please vote? <laughs> Clerk, will you record the vote? Eleven yay, zero nay. Motion passes. A motion passes. Okay, moving on to presentations. For communication number 2024-82, Hattie Thatcher, BSB Commissioner District 3, requesting Council of Commissioners authorization for the recipients of the economic mill levy monies to give a presentation within 90 days of project completion on Wednesday, March 13th, 2024, or Wednesday, April 10th, 2024. And I believe we have Copper City Softball to give a presentation. Hi, welcome. Will you please state your name? Hello, my name is Lee Dow. Um, my address is here. And we'll start off with a bang. <laughs> um, hello, everyone. My name is Amy Babb. My address is 3601 Elizabeth Warren, and I'm here tonight representing Copper City Softball Little League. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the chat tonight will be based uh, on a, a project that we submitted to the council last year, um, our Field of Dreams campaign. Tonight I'm going to walk through a brief um, overview of who we are and what we do, followed by a discussion of our Field and Dreams campaign to give you an update, and then I'll follow up with any questions that you may have about our league or about our project. Um, so Copper City Softball Little League is the Butte's newest little league. We were uh, established in 2019. Um, we join a long list of little leagues here in town. In fact, Ed Foley established Little League in 1951, which is kind of interesting. And although I was reading through the articles, um, they really didn't mention softball, but I did find an article dated May 1939 where there was a softball um, league for ladies and girls, um, and, and they were playing through the parishes of the city. So it was kind of interesting to see that softball has been around in our community for quite a while. Um, the purpose of Copper City Softball is to focus softball for all ages from 4 to um, 16. Um, we started in, uh, like I said, 2019. We had just about 100 girls that started our league. This year we just closed registration um, and we're putting the teams together as we speak. We have just under 300 girls playing and 27 teams um, that will be playing down at the Longfellow Field. So it's really kind of interesting to see um, our project or our uh, league is growing and even to see you know the seniors that are playing in Butte High and uh, Butte Central started our league as well they were in the um, in the, the Sandlot League so our fifth year which was last year the board of directors decided that we were going to try to put together a field of dreams campaign and what that was is throughout the years we were having some issues with the fields where we'd have standing water when the um, when it would rain um, and it's just that, you know the, the fields in general were started in 1953 so it was kind of time for an upgrade um, so we kind of set our goal of fifty thousand dollars to get a field um, resurfaced and with the help of um, anthony laslovich and wet we were able to get an assessment done as to what it would take to get it done um, we approached uh, chief executive gallagher and his team as well as the park and recs board and we set forth to, uh, to start raising funds. The funds that we raised through this community and elsewhere were unbelievable. Um, all in all, our project raised $117,000 between donations, um, website donations, which were from our families, um, website, or excuse me, in-kind donations, and the economic mill levy grant that you awarded us last year. Um, we got it 95% complete last year, and not only were we able to do one field, but we were able to do three fields. Um, the fields were resurfaced, and by that I mean they took out 18 inches of topsoil. They brought in uh, a base layer to help with the, the water drainage. We put in a, a protective barrier on top, and then um, dirt <laughs> and a recipe, which was always kind of a joke, but there's a certain mixture of dirt that is used for playing fields. So that was put on all three fields. Um, in addition to that, um, and that was all done with the help of, of um, Hollow Construction. 
In addition to that, um, custom construction helped us. We put together new backstops, upgraded the dugouts. Um, we updated the concession stands in the bathrooms. Um, with the help of Butte Silver Bow, we painted all the buildings down there the same color. So that park has really had an uplift um, and a facelift in the past year. Um, the the twelve thousand dollars that was granted to us through the economic mill levy grant was put directly towards the fencing, and we now have all new fencing in the park. Um, so all in all, you know, like I said, we 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 raised one hundred seventeen. We spent one hundred eighteen thousand. It was a great project. I think it's. Um, cleaned up that entire park, and, and we're proud to call that home for Copper City Softball. Are we done? No, not really. We're going to be looking at potential um, bringing in a, an a additional field in the, let's see, the, the northwest corner. There was a field there at one time, and if you know where to look, you can still find home plate. Um, with the amount of girls that are coming out to play, we might be looking at putting an additional field there. Um, we're looking at some permanent bleachers, some ongoing maintenance, um, and we'll just continue to work to keep up that park and keep up our, our softball programs. Um, just to, to bring up a few things, we are having, having an open day, opening day on Sunday, May 5th. Um, that is our league's way to, to start the league. We have a picnic. We have all of our sponsors down. This year is the 50 year of um, Little League softball. And so we're going to be having the, um, the first all-star girls team down as kind of the honorary um, group to, to, um, to introduce. So it'll be kind of a fun day if you ever want to get down there, um, walk through the facility, um, you know, get, my, get a hold of myself or Kate McGree, and, and we can walk you through the process. Um, in the packets, I did include some pictures before, during, and after, so hopefully they give you an idea of what's been going down at the park and hopefully we'll see you down there this this spring. I will open it up to any questions that you have. All right, thank you. Uh, wow, uh, great job. Thank uh, you. I'll open it up for questions. Thank you, commissioners, uh, Commissioner Mankins. Um, I just wanna um, thank uh, Copper City Softball for coming here, Amy and everybody else that's been involved with that. Um, it's kind of, um, very dear to my heart, seeing that I've been part of Butte High Softball for the last 19 years. Um, this has been a great uh, commitment by Copper City Softball and everybody involved in this to establish something for these 300 girls plus that continue to grow. It's a great feeder program, not only for Butte High School, but for Butte Central. Um, I just can't say enough great things about what you're doing and continue to do for these young ladies um, to help them provide the best and to be the best. So thank you, appreciate you. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Fisher. Thank you, Chairman Fredrickson. Amy, thank you. Um, I live in the neighborhood now. I played Little League Baseball there many, many years ago. In fact, Ed Austin was my coach even at the time. <laughs> so it shows you how far back we go, but I just can't thank you enough for what you did. And uh, I'm hoping to maybe help you raise the other $1,200 you need to pay uh, what's left on your balance for the fix up. So Appreciate I'll that. begin contact with you and uh, keep up the great work. It's a great facility and it's a great neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Thatcher. Thank you, Chairman Fredrickson. Amy, obviously this is very, like Mankin said, uh, near and dear to my heart. Although it wasn't as long ago as Commissioner Fisher, <laughs> I did play at these fields too. And frankly, they looked exactly the same as they did in your before pictures. And so just seeing the dedication that you guys show all of the time to girls, to our community, it's just something that is very admirable. And I hope that you know that we all appreciate it very much. So thank you and thank you for being here tonight. Thank you, thank you. Are there any other questions from commissioners or comments? All right, thank you, Amy, and incredible work. Thank you so Appreciate much. Appreciate you for com coming up here. All right, next presentation, five communication number 2024-162, Christian Barlow, ex-Gen Holding Chairman, requesting Council of Commissioners authorization for a presentation on April 10th, 2024, for a presentation regarding the ex-Gen Holding initiatives. Mr. Thank Barlow, thank you. Yes, sir. Welcome to council. 
Thank you very much. My name is Christian Barlow. I live at 211 Tippy Toe Trail in Anaconda, Montana. Uh, the reason why I'm here tonight is because I am hoping to build a relationship with Butte long term and move some of our companies into Butte uh, from various other states. Uh, so if you guys don't mind, we're going to take this a little bit different than how you guys are normally used to it. We're not going to death by PowerPoint you. I'd rather have this as an open discussion. Uh, so how I'd like to proceed, I'll give you guys my background. Uh, I'll introduce the first company, let you guys take a look at that, uh, and then build on from there. Um, so my name is Christian Barlow. I founded Extern Holdings back in 2017. Uh, it started with an initiative called IAQ-CPR. Um, all of us are experienced with COVID. All of us went through that, uh, you know, no matter which side you lean, uh, that wonderful tragedy, if you will, uh, from a political standpoint. During that time, we were manufacturing air quality devices. Uh, those air quality devices have been being manufactured out of Goshen, Indiana, uh, through one of our uh, partners called CAMC Controls. Uh, my wife and I uh, have decided to move back to Montana about four years ago. Uh, when we did, we decided we were also going to move those businesses back with us uh, when it made sense. Uh, one of the things that was important to the holding company and to me in general was ethics. Um, and so we, over the last two and a half years, have been vetting Butte and vetting Anaconda uh, and ultimately deemed we'd like to partner uh, with Butte and bring manufacturing to Butte. Um, and I'll leave it at that. Uh, as far as the holding company itself, uh, the intent uh, originally was to move IAQ first. Uh, upon review of Butte and upon re uh, review of the infrastructure within Butte, uh, we decided that we needed to elaborate amongst those projects uh, and also look at power infrastructure and long-term stability if we were to move these companies into town. Uh, so as some of you may have seen, there are some other initiatives in there. One of them have the word nuclear on them. Uh, so before we start diving into nuclear, I'll dive into my background. So hopefully you guys are a little more comfortable with us saying nuclear in the room. Uh, so my background is I went straight in the Air Force out of uh, high school. I worked at Malmstrom Air Force Base in a power refrigeration electronics lab. Uh, I ran the lab for a number of years, uh, worked with a lot of the technology R&D and advancements within the lab for the missile complex. I left the complex uh, in 2012, uh, retired out uh, under a medical disability, uh, left and decided to start uh, within the engineering sector. Um, so I'll, I'll harass you guys later on your lighting project because I might be able to help you on that one too. But uh, the, the short and sweet is, is uh, I moved uh, into private sector. Uh, upon moving into private sector, I worked for a company called ABM, uh, which is a Fortune 500. I ran their engineering division for the state of Texas, building power plants, building power and infrastructure, and what are known as uh, guaranteed energy performance contracts. So doing large scale energy projects for public entities guaranteeing the savings, being on the hook for it for the remainder of the life, uh, and ultimately ended up building an air quality company off of that. Uh, so the products that you guys are passing around right now was one of our first companies uh, and is still an active and flourishing company. Uh, the devices that you're looking at, um, if any of you are familiar with uh, air ionization or air cleaning, it was very big during the height of COVID. Our company owns all of the patents for variable ionization and variable uh, ionization air cleaning. So anytime you modulate an ionizer, uh, that is our IP and we manufacture those goods. Uh, so what you guys are touching now, uh, within the baggies or ionizers themselves, the little black box, if you would mind holding up that. Yep. So those are ionizers, so those actually go within airflow. We're looking to manufacture those here in the county. Um, if you hold up that little black box, if you don't, yep, perfect. If you uh, take a look at that device, that is a smart controller. Uh, so prior uh, to COVID and uh, building up, most of the building automation controllers were serial, so they're either on or off. We found a way to actually make them true variable in state. Uh, so that was one of the inventions that we hold that I invented. Uh, when you look at ionization as a whole, it is atomic balancing, so balancing the polarity charge of an atom, either positive or negative. Uh, so quite a bit of atomic background. Uh, moving forward, uh, we'd be looking to build a, a manufacturing plant here within uh, Butte. 
So we've talked with uh, Mr. Gallagher at length so far and hope to continue. We've also worked with the state uh, as well to, to start to look at those initiatives. Uh, some of the other companies that we're looking at bringing in, uh, I invented uh, generation four night vision. So we are looking to manufacture night vision tube assemblies here within Butte. Um, and then we are also looking at uh, hiring full time and moving our holding company to Butte, which is currently in Boca Raton, Florida. Um, so with that, uh, and as far as jobs, you know, one of the first things that come up is jobs, jobs, jobs. Uh, right now we employ about 120 people out of Goshen, Indiana. Uh, our intent is to have 60 of those individuals move to town and employ an additional 60 uh, from local populace and train from local populace uh, within those manufacturing plants uh, as we build. Uh, within the optics company, we do not have a manufacturing plant for that right now. We've been subcontracting out of Tempe, Arizona. Uh, employing about 60 people through that process over that time and looking to scale up from there. Uh, so we'd be moving those jobs and those manufacturing resources here as well. Um, of course, when you look at this type of infrastructure and this type of manufacturing, power and infrastructure is a big deal. Uh, I think we're all familiar with some of the local PR and issues that have occurred from power fluctuations, demand and, and cost rising. Uh, so one of the first things we did was look at vetting, uh, building a, what's known as a small modular reactor nuclear power plant here within Butte. Um, so I don't know if any of you guys saw that within my letter, um, but the short and sweet is, is we're looking at building a 500 megawatt uh, nuclear power plant uh, off of our manufacturing facility. Uh, of that, we'll be using 130 to 140 megawatts to start. Uh, and then the available power would be available to any of the other manufacturing partners or big users in the area with the intent to give it to them as close to cost as feasible um, to re-emphasize and vitalize channel partners in the area. So with that, that's a mouthful. There's a lot of questions. So I would love to open it to questions and then kind of dive into each one as you guys have questions. So. All right, thank you, Mr. Barlow. Uh, thank you for considering Butte. Um, uh, this is all uh, all great. So if you were, I guess, what is your timeline for moving these to Butte if you were to do that? Certainly. So we're looking at land acquisitions with the county. I've talked with Mr. Gallery at length on that as well. I believe you guys uh, may be versed in that at this point. Uh, but the intent is to try to acquire that land in the next two to three months. Uh, and then our intent, and we've already talked with the NRC, which is the federal regulation for nuclear power plants. Um, we have talked with them. We have already been greenlit to build here. We're working with Westinghouse Electric. Uh, so we'll be using one 300 megawatt uh, Westinghouse SMR, and we'll be using an additional 40 uh, eVinci micro reactors, all, all tied into that plant. And so we do have NRC's blessing. Mm -hmm. uh, we have gone through a lot of that vetting process already. Uh, and Westinghouse is already game to do the project within the county. So the intent would be purchase the land in the next two to three months. Uh, if we can acquire the land in the next two to three months, we are able to actually have right around 100 megawatts of nuclear power online by January of 26. Um, being that it's a small modular reactor and being that they're portable, uh, there is going to be no waste dealt with here in the county. They're closed cells, so it's not like if you guys have ever seen a nuclear power plant with a big open uh, water-cooled reactor. Uh, these are actually enclosed uh, air-cooled reactors, uh, so there's no water risk, there's no water intrusion risk. Uh, it is all air-cooled air, air source. Okay, I'll open it up to questions. Commissioner Sorge. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Chairman. Thank you for being here tonight. You know, it sounds exciting. And there are a lot of questions. You know, obviously, yes, it's, it's, you know, that's a huge, Huge project. So, um, my only question is: Would you, with the uh, would you need any state permitting? You know, you talked about federal permitting. What, yes, sir. What about? Yes. Yeah, so, the the state passed in 2021 new legislation that said that we no longer have to go out to uh, citizens to vote on nuclear reactors. Prior to 21, we had to go out for a vote. Um, that is no longer the process within the state. And so, as long as we have land to build and NRC is available, uh, the state is completely game. We've had active conversations with Michael Freeman, uh, who is, of course, the policy advisor for energy up there, uh, and numerous others at the state, uh, and none of them are going to require permitting for that power plant. 
Um, and so it would really be localized permitting for the manufacturing side, uh, and those would be individual companies. Uh, and then the NRC would oversee uh, any of the permitting structure build uh, audits within the actual uh, nuclear power plant itself. Yes, sir. Okay. Commissioner Fisher. Thank you, Chairman Fredrickson. Thank you, Mr. Barlow. Yes, sir. It's exciting. Uh, I'm not very educated in this kind of stuff, but it sounds really, really great to me. So uh, I support 100%. I just maybe like to have Kristen Rosa come up because I know it's out in her neck of the woods out there. She <laughs> kind of keeps us informed about everything that's happening out there, and she does a great job of it. So maybe if she could just get us a little enlightenment about how the process is going and how you're thinking the process should go. So thank you. Uh, Tip Administrator Chair Rosa, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Chairman Fredericks and Commissioner Fisher, Commissioners. Um, so we have been in talks with Mr. Barlow for quite um, a couple months, maybe probably not quite two months. But um, through the description of his project, we decided to have it, him present to you first. We expect that this then purchase agreement will go back to the TIFA board for their review and their recommendation back to you. The parcel that we're talking about is a 160 acre parcel that is north of REC Silicon. It is the one that was optioned by Mitsubishi. Um, they terminated their option about a year ago. Um, and so we're pretty interested in hearing yeah. about this and seeing if we can move this project forward. Yeah, follow up Commissioner Fisher. Thank you, Kristen. You're always a wealth of information. Um, you got another neighbor out here, happens to be a niece. I'd like to just, she's with the uh, REC company out there and being a neighbor, I'd like to always hear what the neighbors think about what's going on. So if she'd like to come up and give a little spiel, I think it'd be nice for all of us to hear a little bit. Uh, I, yeah. <laughs> 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 Uncle Jim, Commissioner Jim. Um, Thank you. I um, have been also can, in... Can you state your name for oh, the I'm record, sorry. please? Oh, I'm that's Deanna okay. Worley. I am the Vice President of Operations for REC Silicon here in Butte. So, um, Christian and I have been in discussions since late last year when we made our announcement that we would be discontinuing some operations out at our facility, um, which is happening. And um, the reason it is happening, as you're probably aware, is power imbalance in the state of Montana does not allow us to continue operating our polysilicon business, which is a huge impact to us. We are one of two suppliers in the world, but based on the fact that there is a power imbalance in the state of Montana, we will be shutting down that operation by the end of the year. So Christian contacted us early on, and um, of course, you know, my support for this is overwhelming because to create not only power for the state of Montana and for operations, but also green power, because that's where we need to go, right? We are a renewable company. We sell to places all over the world that expect us to be green. And my biggest concerns, well, Christian's heard a lot of my concerns, but one of them is that we need to educate people on what this process is because everybody has a vision in their head about what nuclear power means. But if you look into it and you get you know, up to date, and I'm getting myself up to date as well, this is the way of the future. And this is what we need to do to recruit in these businesses, not just what Christian can bring to the table, but I sit across the table from battery companies and I have to tell them where our restraints are in, in the state of Montana. So having a viable solution that this community and the state can support is the way that we develop into the future. So I fully support this. I, I hope that we, we all can support it for the future of not only, you know, Somerville County, but other businesses in the state of Montana. Okay, great, thank you. Follow up, Commissioner Fisher. Thank, thank you, Chairman Fredrickson. Thank you, Deanna. Thank you, Kristen Rosa. Uh, Mr. Barlow, I um, heard from the neighbors, I've heard from you, and I look to get more educated myself, and I wish you the best in the future. So anything that I can do or some of the commissions can do, you just let us know and we'll work with you. Thank you. Yes, sir, yeah. if I may, uh, mm -hmm. one more comment. Um, the intent is, uh, and the reason we're, we're utilizing eVenture reactors to start uh, is that the NRC has already approved all final designs on the eVenture, uh, meaning we don't have to wait on any NRC review. Uh, the 300 uh, SMR, uh, which is Westinghouse product as well, is currently sitting at uh, the NRC as well. 
Uh, Westinghouse has done a scaled up version of that reactor, which is 1,000 megawatt and has successfully brought those on in numerous places across the United States. Uh, this will be a scaled down version of that and also a air cooled instead of water cooled version. Uh, and so the intent is to, uh, from January 26 to January 27, bring on an additional 100 megawatts of Evinci reactors uh, to allow a total amount of 200 megawatts prior to uh, beginning construction and, and executing on that 300 uh, because of the immediate need. Uh, and the holding company itself is only looking to uh, utilize about 50 megawatts for that time period and then ramp up to 120 megawatts. And so the intent will be our surrounding neighbors to have access to that power plant uh, to offset and, and buy at cost. Follow up, Commissioner Fisher. Uh, thank you, Chairman Fredrickson. Like to see you networking together and making it happen. Yes, Good sir. luck. Good luck. Any right. other questions? Oh. Are there any other questions? Commissioner Callahan. Thank you, Chairman Fredrickson. Yeah, Mr. Bartlow, there, this sounds wonderful. <laughs> it's almost so wonderful. It's. Uh, Hard to believe that we were at this point already. You've obviously done a lot of talking. I know uh, 500 megawatts is a boatload of power. I know, uh, I believe it wasn't more than a few years ago, Northwestern Energy put some RFPs out for power plants and the ones that produce that kind of power they couldn't look at because they didn't have the sales for it. Yes, sir. Uh, obviously, you know, Miss Worley says they're willing to buy power from you. Uh, many places will buy power if you're going to be affordable. Um, so will the power plant be built first? What will you do for the power prior to the plant being built? So, so sir, respectfully, that's a loaded question. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, you know, in order to build a power plant, we have to go through concrete foundation uh, review. So the, the difference between uh, building manufacturing based manufacturing is you have reviews of concrete infrastructure with uh, localized zoning and our engineering. Um, when you start to dabble in power plants, uh, NRC comes in and will do core studies of our concrete. Uh, they do structural studies uh, and do complete reviews. So a more thorough audit than I think uh, any of us have experienced, even me with my nuclear background. Uh, granted, we have experience from STP, uh, which is a 3,200 megawatt plant down in Texas uh, that I advised for for a number of years. Um, and, and so I'd say the intent uh, is to immediately start construction on the power plant and start pouring concrete because that is a long lead time process. And so the intent would be to start that process immediately even prior to moving manufacturing. Uh, and the reason being is that we need at a minimum 30 megawatts prior to us moving. Uh, and, and respectfully, I understand uh, Northwestern's uh, you know, st stance here in the state. Um, I specialize in microgrids and building energy efficiency pro uh, you know, projects for public entities. That is my background. Um, and so the intent is to keep as much of this within a self-contained microgrid as feasible and keep it off uh, Northwest transmission lines or brokered outside of any other channel partners uh, so that I'm not limited to sales price or distribution values. Uh, in other words, so I can uh, make it as feasible as possible for our surrounding partners. And um, without disclosing too much, uh, one of the reasons why is we are incentivized to reopen uh, some other divisions that have hence left uh, because we use some of those products within uh, night vision uh, and I look forward to utilizing those more uh, and so we're looking for uh, really long-term partnerships within the county um, and within the surrounding uh, growth of our companies uh, and so I'd say the first intent is uh, 50 megawatts give or take uh, but we're looking to have 100 megs online by January 26 uh, and then begin construction of uh, IAQ first and then Extron Optics second. Uh, and we'll be building the holding company headquarters at that same time. Uh, that way we can re relocate those staff from Florida. Follow up, Commissioner Callahan. Thank you, Chairman. So if you get your manufacturing built and you start out with 30 megawatts. Yes, sir. Is that power available? That's a bunch of power also. That power would be available through uh, building my own microgrid uh, with or without the power plant. And so the intent is uh, we are gung-ho and moving full steam ahead. It's very rare that you have NRC supporting a proj project this quickly. Uh, and it's even more rare to have a company like Westinghouse backing us. 
Um, and so I would say due to our partnerships and everything else, it makes sense long term, especially with my family being here. We're here now full time, have been for four years. Um, I would like to get it online as quick as feasible. Uh, but we will do that with our own enclosed grid one way or another, even if that's solar or cogen, um, until that power plant's online. But the intent is not to tie in uh, to current existing infrastructure more than we have to. Thank you. No, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from commissioners? Oh, Chief, oh, Commissioner Reardon. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Yes, sir. Well, you're not too smart, I'll tell you, huh? I, I'm really impressed what you got going here with and all that. Uh, my question to you is, uh, uh, under the, the construction of this power plant and all that, how many construction workers do you expect to, uh, to have on that job? Uh, yes, sir. So that, that's another loaded question. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, so the short and sweet is, is uh, around 20 to 30 full-time welders for pipe work and airflow work. Um, within a two year interval of construction uh, that will taper off over time within the construction sector. Uh, being that the power plant side is uh, under heavy scrutiny, we will be bringing in some of the construction partners as well. We'll be subbing out locally as much as feasible, uh, but some of that piping does require additional credentials, additional, additional training. And so right. where we can provide it, we will. Uh, but some of that may be coming in. And so I can't give you full figures yet. I'd be happy to, happy to furnish you docs no, on that. No, but no. Uh, when it comes to manufacturing, then it, the intent is to use as much localized labor as possible to build those plants, get those plants up and running. Um, but when it comes to the power plant specifically, being that it's so sensitive and honestly so important to the community, I need the most professionals on the job site as quick that. as feasible. All right. Thank you very much. Good luck. Yes, sir. Thank you. Chief Executive Gallagher. Thank you, Chairman Fredrickson. Uh, thank you, Christian, for being here. As, yes, as uh, was noted, we uh, started discussions about two months ago with Christian um, about his vision for moving his companies here, also with the small cell mm -hmm. nuclear um, as well. I've been in contact with the state agencies as he's, as he's talked about. Um, uh, had calls into the governor's office, talked to Michael Freeman, um, um, was referenced to, to Director Green in the Debar Department of Commerce, and then we've connected with Jamie Sharon of the, of the Department of Commerce as well. So we've, the, um, this project is no secret to the state. They understand what's going on. They understand uh, the intricacies there that it takes to, to stand these companies. And um, I, I, it, it is a, a really, um, expedited schedule, but, you know, um, learning more about it. I have a father-in-law that is in the nuclear, he's, he was a nuclear engineer, worked in the Idaho facility, he was on nuclear subs, and we've been talking about the Vinci uh, reactors and stuff, and so I've been learning a lot about it, and so this is real. This is an opportunity for, for um, Butte Silver Bow, um, for our local companies, uh, REC, uh, Montana Resources, all of the, all of our companies that are high power users uh, could benefit from this. So um, it's something that I think that I can stand behind and I can support. I think it's, uh, you know, I didn't sit back and, and wait to see if this was real or not. We went out and we we're looking to see, um, is this feasible for, for Butte Silver Bow? And so um, we support um, moving forward. Of course, you know, we'll be watching the progress and, and, yes, and has uh, the regulation of it all, but we wish you good luck. Thank you, thank you. And one more comment, if mm -hmm. I may. Yeah. Um, I do wanna note, we've been working with the state uh, for about nine months now in the background on getting permits and everything in place. Uh, we do have standing mutual NDAs uh, and affidavits into the state right now for non-disclosures. And so a lot of this happened in the background and will continue to happen in the background um, due to the sensitivity of it and some of the pull of some of the other energy providers and uh, competitors, we're trying to keep it um, moving as fast as we can without, uh, you know, having to disclose as much as feasible. Uh, we are prepared to uh, issue pamphlets out to you guys as the commission, and so we'll be sending that over to you as well by the end of the week uh, to distribute out. Uh, any additional questions or anything else, uh, feel free to reach out or ask for more clarification. All right. Thank you so much. Thank um, you guys. And thanks again for considering Butte and yes, anything you need from us. Um, 
seems like a great, great thing. So yes, thank you for coming. Thank you. All right, moving to section two communications. One communication number 2024-82, Hattie Thatcher, BSB commissioner, district three, requesting council of commissioners authorization for the recipients of the economic mill levy monies to give a presentation within 90 days of project completion on Wednesday, March 13th, 2024, or Wednesday, March 27th, 2024. Um, that was actually supposed to say April 10th. Uh, Commissioner Thatcher. Thank you, Chairman Fredrickson. At this time, I'd like to place communication number 2024-82 on file. Second. We have a motion to and a second. Is there anything on the question? Would commissioners please vote? Clerk, will you record the vote? 11 yay, zero nay. 11 yay, zero nay, 11 yay, zero nay, motion passes. Two, communication number 2024-132, Mark Neary, Public Works Director, requesting council commissioners concurrence to schedule a bid opening for April 10th, 2024 for concrete work at Civic Center, Ofer Street, Wells Mul and Mullen Streets, and Cherokee Park. We had this bid opening earlier, Commissioner Thatcher. Thank you, Chairman Fredrickson. This time I'd like to place communication number 2024-132 on file. We have a motion to end a second. Is there anything on the question? Would commissioners please vote? Clerk, will you record the vote? 11 yay, zero nay. 11 yay, zero nay, motion passes. Zero nay, motion passes. Three, communication number 2024-138, Jim Keenan, Water Plant Superintendent requesting Council of Commissioners permission to schedule a public hearing for April 3rd, 2024 for the purpose of soliciting comments on the final Community Wildlife Protection Plan. Uh, we had that public hearing last week. Commissioner Thatcher. Thank you, Chairman Fredrickson. At this time, I would like to place communication number 2024-138 on file. Second. We have a motion to end a second. Is there anything on the question? Would commissioners please vote? Clerk, will you record the vote? 11 yay, zero nay. 11 yay, zero nay, motion passes. For, communica for communication number 2024-141, Ed Hurd, Parks and Recreation, Interim Director, requesting Council of Commissioners concurrence to schedule a bid opening for April 3rd, 2024 for a double-decker mower for the Parks and Recreation Department. We held this bid opening last week. Commissioner Thatcher. Thank you, Chairman Fredrickson. At this time, I'd like to place communication number 2024-141 on file. We have a motion to end a second. Is there anything on the question? Would commissioners please vote? Clerk, will you record the vote? 11 yay, zero nay. 11 yay, zero nay, motion passes. Five. Five, communication number 2024-143, John Sullivan, Government Buildings Manager, requesting Council of Commissioners concurrence to schedule a bid opening for April 10th, 2024 for LED lighting upgrade for the detention center. We did not receive any bids for this one, so Commissioner Thatcher. Thank you, Chairman Fredrickson. At this time, I'd like to place communication number 2024-143 on file. Second. We have a motion to end the second. Is there anything on the question? Would commissioners please vote? Commissioner Anderson. Clerk, will you record the vote? 11 yay, zero nay. 11 yay, zero nay, motion passes. Motion passes. Six, communication number 2024-148, Kristen Rosa, Economic Development Coordinator, requesting Council of Commissioners concurrence to schedule a bid opening for April 17th, 2024, for the North Park Mount Project. We will hold that for the bid opening next week. Seven, communication number 2024-162, Christian Barlow, XGen Holding Chairman, requesting Council of Commissioners authorization for a presentation on April 10th, 2024, for a presentation regarding the XGen Holding Initiative. Commissioner Thatcher. Thank you, Chairman Fredrickson. At this time, I'd like to place communication number 2024-162 on file. We have a motion to end a second. 
Is there anything on the question? Would commissioners please vote? Clerk, will you record the vote? 11 yay, 0 nay. 11 yay, 0 nay. 11 yay, 0 nay. Motion passes. 8, communication number 2024-163, Aubrey Jap, Butte Silver Bow Public Archives Director requesting Council of Commissioners authorization for a presentation on April 24th, 2024 on the Archives 2023 Annual Report. We will hold that for the presentation on April 24th. 9, communication number 2024-165, Angie Mulliken, Public Works Budget and Grant Manager, requesting Council of Commissioners concurrence to schedule a bid opening for April 10th, 2024 for the Molten Dam Spillway and Embankment Improvement Project for the Water Division. We will hold that, oh, uh, we had that bid opening today. Commissioner Thatcher. Uh, thank you, Chairman Fredrickson. At this time, I'd like to place communication number 2024-165 on file. We have a motion to end a second. Is there anything on the question? Would commissioners please? Clerk, will you record the vote? 11 yay, 0 nay. 11 yay, 0 nay. Motion passes. Motion passes. 10, communication number 2024-169, Ed Hurd, Parks and Recreation Interim Director, requesting Council of Commissioners concurrence to schedule a bid opening for April 24th, 2024, for hazardous tree removal at Stodden Park. We will hold that for the bid opening on April 24th. 11, communication number 2024-172, Lisa Carey, Office of Emergency Management Director, requesting Council of Commissioners concurrence to schedule a bid, a public hearing for April 17th, 2024, for the purpose of amending the fiscal year 2023-2024 budget to allow for increased expenditures of an unanticipated revenue. We will hold that for the public hearing on April 17th. I will now ask for public comment on any public matter not on the agenda. Seeing none, I will ask for a motion to adjourn. We have a motion to end a second. All those by in favor, signal by saying aye. aye. All opposed.